Morning, everybody. <laughs> you know, you get, you get the patio furniture out, you have your first feet of lobster, you go to the Energy NL conference. It's the signs of summer in Newfoundland. Uh, I think it's probably between you guys and the Capelin who marks the start of the season. This is an incredibly important room for me to be in. You represent the most critical part of our provincial and our national economy. This room has everything from multinationals to sole proprietorships. You got companies with currency hedging desks and you got other companies that are running on simply accounting. This room has, to name a few, accountants, millwrights, medical professionals, lawyers, uh, welders, engineers. This is a substantial cross-section of the Canadian economy, not just the provincial economy, the Canadian economy. Canada does well when this room does well, and nothing gives me more pride than when this room does well. Nothing gives me more pride than when I'm able to look somebody in the eye and say, well, actually, and tell them about the incredible things that are happening in this province. You just have to look at the gravity structure going up right next to the monopiles in Argentia. Scott and the crowd out there are killing it. Not to mention that their port expansion got, got its EIS approval a couple of months ago, and they managed to get another $38 million out of the government of Canada for it. Pattern Energy's plans for a wind farm nearby, don't sleep on that. And go up the bay a bit, and you got the $80 million that we invested in Brea's renewable fuel project. That's now turning feedstock to renewable diesel and shipping it to customers in California. Now they're looking at what they can do with hydrogen to fuel the facility and eventually to export. In port of port we got World Energy GH2. They're putting the pieces in place to turn wind into green hydrogen. Meanwhile, the crowd at Everick have been busy with their project in central Newfoundland, returning Botwood to its rightful place as an international shipping port. And Everwind, eyeing the Buring Peninsula, potential for billions in investments, 5,000 construction jobs, 750 operating jobs. If that's not what success looks like, I'm not sure what is. Jobs are coming back. Economic development happening in areas where there have been years of hardship. Energy plays that would not have been on our, on our radars, what, seven years ago, six. But what was on our radar, six years ago, continues to prosper. Terra Nova, back in production. The lifespan of that project been extended now to 2031 with good jobs for workers and good returns for shareholders. We got the Sea Rose over in Ireland to getting a refit to extend to the White Rose Field all the way to 2038. Good jobs, good returns. Hebron, back in December, got its approval to extend its development within the Jean d'Arc Formation. Another 33 million barrels, bringing the total up to 165 million proven and probable barrels on site. Beta Noor, drilling again this summer. That and expressions of interest for concept and feasibility study issues earlier this year. And then Hibernia, out there pumping away like one of those old skippers with a fly rod just showing everyone on the river how it's done. Hibernia's estimated project life extended beyond 2040. It is incredible. It changed the industrial face of this province and it continues to contribute to the provincial and federal economy. New plays, existing plays, they're all important to all of Canada. Not many of you may know that uh, last year I was named, wait for it, chair of the new ministerial working group on regulatory efficiency for clean growth projects. Yes. Someone came up with that title. Riveting. Um, but riveting title aside, this is an important group. The most senior economic ministers sit on it, including the finance minister. Its purpose is to cut red tape, cut duplication, maintain environmental integrity, so we can take advantage of the lucrative new investment opportunities in energy and get stuff built faster. It's the same type of thinking that saw us take the 900-day environmental assessment process we inherited just to drill in an exploratory well 
and reduce it to 90 days, 900 to 90. No more duplication, no more wasting time because this country needs to build. We need to build more mines, more dams, more nuclear, more solar, more wind. We know you need tools to build, skilled workers to get the job done, and you need the confidence to invest. So we are updating the Impact Assessment Act. So yes, if you're wondering if this is the part of the speech where you're allowed to gloat a bit, yes it is. More flexibility, with assessment substitution, preventing duplication between jurisdictions, and earlier agency screening on whether full impact assessments are actually required. And we're not stopping there. A new online federal permitting dashboard. So we are increasing and insisting on more coordination for consistent permitting and consultation. So you can build our processes into your Gantt charts. And look, I'm sure there's something better out there than a Gantt chart, but I'm in policy, not in operations. I'm in an industry room. So I know you know any decision has trade-offs and every decision has externalities. But to be clear, if you build stuff, if you generate energy, if you work with skilled tradesmen to do big things for Canada, if you rely on a federal approval process, if you sell equipment to generate low-emitting energy, we have put better policies in place to help you succeed. This room keeps its eye on the bottom line. I respect that. So I want to talk a bit about some of the macro factors that I know that you're facing. Post-pandemic inflation is coming down, a little slower than anyone wanted, but it looks like supply chains are normalizing. And I appreciate how inflation and capital costs really interfere with capital planning and project analysis. I need not remind you, we all own a pipeline in Western Canada that was built before, during, and after the pandemic. Meanwhile, interest rates remain up. That impacts all types of, de of debt, whether business debts, government debt, personal debt, for those of us who've had to renew a mortgage in the last two years. And the world is getting a little tangly. You got the ever-increasing pitch and tenor of politics in North America, the conflicts in Ukraine and the Middle East, the continued rise of the far right in democratic nations, and frankly, I don't think I'm ready to talk about this bird flu that hopped to another farm worker in the U.S. just a couple of weeks ago. All that to say, if you were looking for things to keep you awake at night, you don't have to look very far. All those things impact what happens here. Investments and available capital. So we're doing our part to tip the field in our favor because, because despite all those headwinds, this is the moment to seize on the opportunity. We've put $93 billion on the table through federal investment tax credits. Carbon capture utilization and storage, clean tech adoption, clean hydrogen, clean tech manufacturing, clean electricity, EV supply chains. $93 billion spread across six different strategic areas and four of those six ITCs have ties to paying a prevailing union wage and creating apprenticeships. Because the health of a country is tied to the financial aid of its workforce. And the red seal that we need tomorrow is the apprentice that you hire today. Two things that I started as natural resources minister, and I hopefully get to finish as labor minister, are two bills, Bill C-49 and C-50. C-49 is now off to the Senate, and basically it will see the CNLOPB, the same one that managed our offshore for decades and ushered. We wanted to usher in the same success with renewables, with a slight name change. More importantly, it will see new industries use the tried and trusted foundation of the Atlantic Accord. The Accord. The Accord is proven. Investors know it. Proponents know it. You know it. Governments agree on it. If we didn't have it, we'd have to invent something else, something new for, renew for renewables. You talk about duplication red tape. This expansion of the accord is what the provincial government wants. They retain a veto over every period and every comma. Plus, we don't have the time to come up with a totally new regulatory regime for renewables. 
because this industry, wind energy and hydrogen, this industry is being built. China is already producing nearly half the global supply of offshore wind. I want Newfoundlanders and Labradorians on the ground floor of this industry. I want to supply the world with wind and hydrogen and the expertise to get it done and then take home the profits. C50 builds on that. It makes sure that as now new opportunities come up in the energy industry that workers have a seat at the table. It became pretty clear to me as natural resources minister during COVID and an oil price war that some of the most creative and practical solutions were coming from workers and from unions. They want a seat at the table. That's what C50 does. If you read the bill, it's, it's not very long. That's all it does. Make sure workers have a seat at the table. Nothing more, but nothing less. Because workers who feel left out, who don't feel that they've been rightly included in an industry that they help build, they tend to get anxious. Sometimes they get angry. Some people want them angry. I want their ideas, especially in a time of a massive labor shortage, particularly in the trades. We need their ideas. During COVID and that oil price war, we got $400 million out the door because we needed to keep that expertise, that expertise of our oil and gas workers in the province and in the game to maintain our prosperity, to keep us competitive. You know, you consider all those projects that I spoke about at the top of the speech, Gravity structure, monopiles, pattern, Breo, World Energy, Everwind, Everec, Synovus, ExxonMobil, Equinor. They have all achieved success right here during these times of uncertainty. Why? Because of this room. Because of the people in this room. Because you know how to persevere. You know how to achieve success in the face of adversity. You know how to get stuff done. And you know you got to pivot to meet the market. You're, you're dialed in. And when you're dialed in, you can get stuff done. You can turn uncertainty into opportunity. That is the strength of the energy sector in Newfoundland and Labrador. I am so proud of this room. This is the future of energy in Canada, this room. It's happening. You can never tell this room it can't be done. Thank you very much once again for your time.